These are the adjust instructions for brewers with a brew keg tin, our combined conical fermenter and keg. This product allows a brewer to ferment, carbonate, clarify and dispense a beverage all from the one vessel. In this step we're going to monitor the temperature and pressure during fermentation and determine when fermentation is finished. Then we're going to chill the beverage and perform two clarifications. A temperature range between 18 to 28 degrees Celsius or 65 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit will ensure a strong fermentation for all beverage types. If you have temperature control, we suggest you target 25 degrees C or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You can ferment lagers at these typically ale temperatures or optionally a little bit colder, 15 degrees for three days and then 18 degrees for three days. The ideal setup for fermentation is to place the brew keg tin inside a kegerator, shown here on the left, or a fridge, shown here on the right, with a heat belt and temperature controller to control the temperature at your set point during fermentation. However, as long as you maintain the temperature range during fermentation, any setup will work and ensure fermentation proceeds and finishes before the chilling step. For example, it could be placed in a small cupboard with a small portable heater, which has a standard adjustable thermostat so that the cupboard's ambient air can be kept in the temperature range required for the period of fermentation. Before you set up your temperature controller, plug your kegerator or fridge into the wall socket and make sure it is set to cold. In the case of a Williams Warren kegerator, set the temperature to 1 degree Celsius. Next, unplug your kegerator or fridge from the wall socket. Then, Plug the temperature controller into a wall socket next to the kegerator or fridge and take the controller temperature probe and place it or tape it to a wall inside the kegerator or fridge. Then at the back of the controller, plug the kegerator or fridge into the cooling socket and the heat belt into the heating socket. Then place your heat belt around a brew keg on the floor of your kegerator or fridge and then close the door. In this setup, you'll be closing the door on the probe and heat belt cords, but the seals on the door will close around them and keep the inside insulated from the outside temperatures. Next, turn the temperature controller on. Then push the set button and then the arrows up and down to choose your temperature and then push the X button to set it. Once set, if your target is at a lower temperature than the ambient temperature, the refrigeration will come on. Conversely, if you set the temperature set point on the temperature controller to a temperature that is warmer than the ambient temperature, the heat belt will come on. The temperature controller will now control the temperature in your kegerator or fridge and either turn the heating on or the cooling on as required. In this instructional video, we're going to brew an ale, shown on the left, and a lager, shown on the right, in a fridge setup with a heat belt and a temperature controller. But the principles are the same if you're using a Williams Warren kegerator. The main difference being a kegerator has permanent taps on top of it rather than portable flexible taps being used. About 12 hours after pitching the yeast, if you shine a torch on the sediment bottle, you should see the signs at the beginning of fermentation. At the top of the sediment bottle, you should see hundreds of CO2 bubbles rising constantly. In general, our yeast start a bit quicker than lager yeast and ferment a bit faster and finish earlier, but in both cases after 12 hours you should see activity. And if you shine a bright torch on the brew keg lid, you should be able to see a lot of foam over most of the surface of the beverage. After 24 hours, the pressure will have built up and the beverage is carbonated. Aim for about 1.5 bar or 22 psi and adjust the VPRV to achieve this after 24 hours once the pressure is built up. If you prefer lower carbonation, brew at a lower pressure to suit your tastes. If the pressure is higher than your target, turn the VPRV anti-clockwise, as this will release some pressure. Conversely, if you can hear or smell CO2 emitting out the VPRV and you aren't at your target pressure, then turn the VPRV clockwise a little bit to establish a new set point, then come back in a few hours and check. At the temperature range we've stated, by day two, the ales will almost be finished and you'll start to see yeast sedimenting in the sediment bottle, as shown here on the left. If you look at the top of the ale sediment bottle, you'll just see a few bubbles rising and yeast flocks falling. For lagers in general, however, they should still be fermenting at day two and you will see bubbles still rising. By day three, Williams Warren Ale kits should mostly be finished and the yeast quite settled, as shown on the left. 
The lager yeast will be starting to settle as shown on the right and the fermentation will have slowed down greatly. At the top of the sediment bottle for the ale you'll just see the odd bubble rising and the odd yeast explosion from the sediment. An ale could be cooled at this stage. At the top of the lager sediment bottle you'll still see some bubbles rising but fermentation is about 99% finished. At the temperature range stated, by day 4, Williams Warren Ale and Lager kits should both be finished. If you ferment the lagers colder at say 15 to 18 degrees Celsius, they will take about 6 days to ferment. If you look on the surface of the beverage through the viewing port with a strong torch, you will see that the foam that was there during fermentation has collapsed to a small amount about 2.5 centimetres or 1 inch in diameter with almost no activity visible. When fermentation is finished, wind the VPRV down to its closed position. If you are fermenting in a kegerator or fridge with a heat belt and a temperature controller, change the set point to 1 to 4 degrees Celsius or 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Unplug the heat belt from the controller and remove it from the kegerator or fridge, ready for the next brew. The fridge will then come on and cool the beverage down. Or conversely, you can turn the temperature controller off, remove its temperature probe, remove the heat belt, and plug the fridge back into the wall socket and use its own temperature controller to refrigerate the beverage. In the case of a Williams Warren kegerator, remember you can also push the fan tubing up into the font and turn the fan on to keep the font cool. In the case of a normal fridge, remove the probe and the heat belt and then plug the fridge back into the wall socket and use its own cooling. If you are fermenting in a room or a cupboard at the right temperature range, it is now time to move the brew keg into a kegerator or fridge or chiller and ensure it is set to cold. Wait 12 hours for the beverage to fully chill down. A Williams Warren cider kit does not need clarification because once it's cold the yeast should all settle out. So for cider you can jump to the dispense instructions now. Beer on the other hand requires clarification. Firstly, close the butterfly valve above the sediment bottle. Ensure you have your CO2 supply connected to a gas quick disconnect fitting and set it at 1.1 bar. Measure 15 ml or half a fluid ounce of clarification agent into the clarification pot and put its lid back on. Then connect the grey quick disconnect fitting to the port on the dosing device lid. Then press the button on the VPRV to reduce the pressure to be about 0.6 bar or 9 psi. The pressure will have reduced naturally during the cooling stage as more CO2 gets dissolved, but the principle here is that we need the tank to be at least half a bar lower than what we've set on the CO2 cylinder in order to be able to dose the clarification agent in. Then connect the black quick disconnect fitting to the beverage output on the brew keg lid. As soon as you connect, the high pressure in the dosing device will force the agent down into the line into the keg. Bubble the agent into the beer for a few seconds or until the vessel pressure equalises with the pressure you've set on your regulator, in this example 1.1 bar. You must hear the bubbling to confirm it's working and it will stop when the pressure equalises. Once you've finished bubbling, remove the grey quick disconnect fitting from the dosing device lid, unscrew the lid and add some rinse water using the 500ml rinse bottle. Wash down the sides of the dosing device. Then put the dosing device lid back on, reconnect the grey fitting and blow the water in just for a few seconds to clear the line. If the water doesn't flow because the pressures are equal, just push the VPRV button again and lower the pressure in the vessel to allow the water to go in for a few seconds. Then disconnect the black fitting from the vessel lid and disconnect the grey fitting from the dosing device lid. Then disconnect the pressure gauge and put the grey fitting on the gas input on the brew keg lid. Then open the vessel butterfly valve. The pressure from the CO2 bottle is now connected onto the vessel and the beverage inside and maintains the natural carbonation. The clarification agent will have reacted with haze proteins and yeast and now a new sediment layer will settle down. Clarify any other brew kegs you may have. In this example we've also clarified the ale on the left. And then make sure your CO2 source is connected to each brew keg. In this example we're using a splitter from our CO2 bottle so that two brew kegs both have grey fittings connected to their gas imports. Please note that the Williams Warren kegerator comes with a split CO2 line like this which is fed through the back of the kegerator. Wait 12 hours for a new sediment layer to form, but be aware that this can occur before the 12 hour mark. So the principle here is that you can get on with the second clarification once you see a definite line between the yeast sediment and the beer in the sediment bottle. You will see a new sediment layer has formed above the naturally sedimented yeast 
and that in most cases there will be a defined beer line above that second layer. So close the vessel butterfly valve and disconnect the CO2 source from the gas in port or ports. Then put the brew keg pressure gauge on the gas in port of the brew keg you want to do a second clarification on. Then repeat the steps of the first clarification from the point of closing the butterfly valve, but this time add 10 mil of agent to the dosing device rather than 15 mil. At the end, remember to disconnect the pressure gauge and reconnect the gas in port with your CO2 source and open the butterfly valve to the sediment bottle. Again, if you are clarifying more than one brew keg, make sure all your brew kegs have the butterfly valves open and pressure on their gas in ports on the lid. Then wait another 12 to 24 hours and the beer will be ready for dispense. Before we go, here's some background information about the pressures that we are using. Historically, the amount of CO2 in a beer has depended on its beer style. And this ranges from about 3 grams per litre to 8 grams per litre. And we've found over the years that Williams Warm Brewers like to target around about 6 to 6.4 grams per litre CO2 in their beers. The typical serving temperatures for beers also has a historical basis and ranges from 1 degree Celsius to about 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. And the brewers in New Zealand, Australia and the United States tend to like the colder beers, so we've targeted 1 degree Celsius as a starting point in these instructional manuals. Carbonation is dependent on the temperature and pressure. The colder it is, the more CO2 dissolves, and the more pressure there is, the more CO2 dissolves. With the brew keg tens, we're targeting a decent amount of carbonation at 6.4 grams per litre. So at 1 degree Celsius, the pressure we need at dispense is 1.1 bar. For fermentation, we target about 0.4 bar above whatever we want at dispense to account for a little bit of a drop once the beer starts getting cooled and to have a little excess just before clarification. So that's why we ferment at 1.5 bar. If you find this level is too carbonated for you, or if there's too much foam coming out of your beer tap when pouring, just reduce your target pressure. And if you like to dispense warmer beer, just be aware that you'll need a slightly higher pressure for the same amount of carbonation. So start with the 1.1 bar and 1 degree Celsius settings as we suggest here. But as you brew, don't be afraid to adjust the CO2 level to your personal preferences by using the chart and the table shown here. If you like the level of carbonation that 1.1 bar gives you at 1 degree Celsius, but would like a warmer beer, a simple rule of thumb is to try 1.2 bar at 2 degrees, or 1.3 bar at 3 degrees, 1.4 bar at 4 degrees, or 1.5 bar at 5 degrees. This works well for those who like a high carbonation level and it will not result in foaming of the beer out the tap when the beer is poured. See the next instructional video, video 4, on how to dispense your beverage.